So you start playing football in high school, you go to Harvard and play football. When did you know you would play professional football? About halfway through my senior season, uh, an NFL scout came by to watch my film and I was kind of like, really? So I just asked him point blank, you know, I said, you really think I could play in the NFL? See, I think you got a chance. And like I said, at that point, you know, again, at this point in my life, I'm selfish. I'm about, I mean, Harvard, I'm about achievement, you know, I'm, I'm about money and success. So this guy's, I can go play in the NFL. So that just really became like my, my singular focus. I, I maybe even went to class a little bit less and was, was just all about, and I just said, I'm just going to pursue this as far as I can. And when it's over, it's over. And then I'll, and then I'll go kind of start my, my real life. Mm. But yeah, it wasn't until my senior year of college. So draft day comes around, you wake up on draft day. What does that feel like? Well, I was nervous because I wasn't sure if I was going to get drafted or not. <laughs> and uh, and I, I had, uh, I'd had a private workout with the Vikings, and they had told me, uh, we're not going to draft the linemen, and you, you're you probably going to get drafted. So it was good to hear. I was like, wow, I'm going to get drafted. That's great. I just wanted an opportunity, but not with the Vikings. So the Vikings weren't on my radar at all. And so then when the phone rang, and it was, you know, they call you – scouts call you hey we're i'm from you know this team we're looking at to take you with the next pick and you know okay but the phone rang and it was denny green the head coach of the minnesota vikings and the head coach isn't calling you to say we might take you he's calling to say we just took you and i remember he said you want to play in minnesota <laughs> I said, of course i do and then my name came up on the screen and i had a bunch of friends we we're all in the dorm room it was a great moment, you know. It's, so you're in the dorm room. That's where you were. Yeah, yeah, just sitting in the dorm room. So you get picked in the sixth round. What did that feel like? What are you thinking in that moment? It's just it, it's it's kind of surreal. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna make my way back home, and you know, it was sort of like things were kind of coming together. I mean, again, it was I was about success. You know, that's what I was about. So I was like, this is great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go play for the Minnesota Vikings. I'll be the hometown hero. You make a lot of money. I'm going to be famous. I mean, it was all just kind of like, it was all just kind of falling into place. Again, that's, that's, that's where I was at at that point in my life. But you still had to finish out the semester. Finished the semester, graduated, graduated, which was important. Um, and uh, yeah, and then went to, went to training camp. And it was very, it was very similar to the experience I had when I first got to Harvard. Yeah. Cause it kind of been in this place where by the end of high school and by the end of college, it's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one of the best. And then you start over and you're on the bottom again. And I had a lot of those same, those same feelings. Like, I don't know if I can do this. Right. I mean, I had built it up in my mind, like, I'm just going to make this happen. And then you get there and you're like, you know, you're trying to block guys like John Randall or, it's not going well. And I said, okay. I said, I'm probably not going to make it. But I said, but I'm just make sure that I show up. I do every single thing they asked me to do. And then when they cut me at the end of training camp, I can just, I can say, I gave it my best and move on. Right. So I show up the first day and it goes horribly. I mean, maybe, maybe the worst practice ever in the history of the NFL. It might be. I mean, I'm talking like I'm not blocking anybody. I couldn't block a dummy, a tackling dummy. And after practice, the coach comes up to me. He's like, um, he's like, I think you need to learn how to play center. I'd never played center before. And I said, okay, well, so what do we do? He's, well, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta learn how to, you gotta learn how to snap a football, right? I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So he goes, be out here five minutes early before practice. And the quarterbacks will meet you out here. We practice snapping a football. Okay, great. So I'm out there waiting, waiting. Here come the quarterbacks. You know, I'm kind of pumped up. Like, I'm trying to pump myself up. Quarterbacks come out. They're like. And for five minutes, we just practiced snapping the football. You know? You just bend over, put your hand on the ball. Quarterback puts his hands underneath you. Takes a little getting used to. You know? And we just practiced snapping the football. And I was like, okay. And uh, that day and every single day, 
I went out five minutes early and practiced snapping a football to the quarterbacks because like the snap, it's, it's that important, you know, like you've probably never noticed the snap unless it's on the ground or over his head. Right. And then you blame the center like everybody else does. You never blame the quarterback, but you never watch a game and say, Oh my gosh, how, how does the center snap the ball? It's, it's perfect. How does he do it? I mean, it's, but it's like, it's like the number first, number one thing of any play, like get a good snap. Otherwise you got no chance. Right. And then we do that. And then every day as a line, you, you go down and you go, you get these things called shoots, you know, and you come out, they teach you how to stay low. You know, they teach you leverage, which is important in line play. And then you do these like same five drills every single day, no matter what, no matter if you're a rookie or you're a 15 year vet, no matter if you're the last guy in the roster or all pro, you do the fundamentals over and over and over because they're that important. Nobody's good enough to just get by on talent to just say, I got this. I'm going to go make it happen. And so you know, I footballize everything. And that's, as I came back to the Catholic faith, that's what I came to really appreciate about the Catholic faith was, you know, I'm, I'm a mess. You know, we're, we're all broken, you know, good times, bad times, whatever. But there's all these fundamentals at our disposal that all we got to do is just show up and do them, right? Like go to mass, go to confession, adoration, you know, the rosary. We, I mean, we've got, we've even got the saints, you know, we've got the hall of fame of cat. There's all these things that it doesn't, I mean, in football, I was a low talent guy. So I was like, I'm just going to show up and just do whatever they tell me to do. And after a while, like I got better and better and became all right at it. It's like the same thing with Catholicism. All you got to do is just, just show up and just keep doing the fundamentals over and over and over. Like that's what football is. You always hear about who's going to win the game. Well, whatever team's more fundamentally sound is going to, it's a game of fundamentals, blocking, tackling, running, catching. I mean, faith and a lot of it's the same thing, right? Like just, just keep doing it over and over and over. And that's kind of, it's kind of countercultural because like we love the highlights, right? Like yep. we're about highlights. We don't give out medals or trophies for just, you know, for like fortitude and perseverance, just showing up over. But that's what I think that's what makes a great life. Yeah. So it makes a great football player. Um, the commitment to to something and just continue to show up. I remember I was having a <laughs> I was late. I was I was late in my career. I don't know. It was like towards the end. And I remember this this younger guy, one of my teammates, comes up to me. And football is really it's a spiritual thing, you know, like as wh wherever you are in your faith, you know, football, it's hard, it hurts. You got to sacrifice you've high highs, low lows. Like there's a lot going on. You have some great moments with your teammates. And there was this guy, he'd been in like five or six years. He comes over to me one day, middle of practice. We're, we're sitting something out. He said, man, he goes, he goes, I gotta ask you something. He goes, how have you lasted so long hmm. in the NFL? And I think he was expecting me to give him like some training tip, you know, like oh, you got to stand on your head for two minutes a night or, you know, something like that. Right. And I said, I said, Ben, I said, early on in my career, it was about, can I do this? You know, it was a challenge of, can I do this? I said, now I'm at the point where it's how much can I take? You know, in a way it's like you show up and you just, you just take the, you put your body through the ringer. You go on this wild ride every year of a season. Yeah. You, know, you put yourself through it and the older you get, the harder it gets. And it kind of became, it's almost like a challenge. Not, can I do it? but how much can I take? Like, can I keep committing to this and doing it more? And that kind of became, that kind of became my thing. And as I get a little bit older, I'm not old, but as I get a little bit older, like that's, that's a little bit how I look at life versus like, what can I go do or what can I go buy or any of that? But it's like, like, you know, part of life is it's sacrifice, it's suffering. Um, how much, how much can I take? 